Last week, I gave you an image analysis task, which consisted in testing the temperature size rule of the Triamina piriformis based on some images. The temperature size rule is a pattern that is often observed in different organisms, whereby the organism grows at a smaller body size if it is adapted or evolved at higher temperature. In a series of experiments, we uh, made tetraimina piriformis, which is a small ciliate, about 50 micrometers in length, grow for 15 generations, approximately, at different temperatures, at 15, 20, or 25 degrees. At the end of this adaptation process, we took some pictures under the microscope, where we can clearly see the tetraimenas, and we can see also at, uh, on the microscope slide this grid, which gives us the scale of the image. Four squares in this grid correspond to one millimeter. Now I open uh, Fiji here on my computer. Sometime maybe it might ask you to um, um, update it. I, in this case, my, my version is already up to date. And I start by dragging and dropping the, the first image in Fiji. Here is the image. I move down the folder with the three images. We can clearly see the tetraimenas and the scale. Before I start doing anything, I want to set the scale for the image. And so I, I go to the menu, analyze, set scale is where I want to go. But because I'm not sure about the actual resolution, I need to take the scale directly from the image. And I will use this line selection tool to select, to draw a line, uh, of the length of up about four squares, which I know is one millimeter. Now I go out to analyze, set scale, and uh, the, the software has already detected the length of the line in pixels, and I need to enter the length of the line in uh, millimeters. But because my, uh, tetraimenas are quite small, I prefer to use a smaller unit than the millimeter. So I will use micrometers. So I say that these uh, 1,106 1, pixels are uh, one millimeter, that is 1,000 micrometers. So the unit is here. And the pixel aspect ratio is one because uh, the, the scale is the same on the vertical and on the horizontal axis. And I set to global so that I keep the scale for the next image. Now I remove the, the line from the selection, I edit selection, select none, and I'm ready to uh, uh, trash the image. But before I do this, I, uh, so this looks like a grayscale image, but in fact it is a color image, except that the three colors are exactly the same value everywhere. This is something that I can verify. If I, if I go to image type, I can see that this is RGB image. And if I move my mouse pointer over the image, here in this part of the window, I will see the position of the mouse and also the, the value of the pixel under the mouse. I do this now. And you can see that all the three, there are three values, 0, 091, 0, 091, 0, 091 which are three times the same, it means that the red, green, and blue channels have exactly the same pixel value. And this is why the image looks like it, if it was grayscale, even if in fact it is a color image. Okay, now I go to uh, so image type 8-bit, so that I convert the image to an 8-bit image. 8-bit, hmm? one pixel is one byte, there is only one color the gray color. And if I go on the image now with the mouse, you can see that now is, there is here only one pixel value appearing, 90 for instance in this case, or 66 in this case. The next step that I need to do is to trash the image to separate the tetraimenas from the background. So I do go to image, adjust and trash it. And I see here the, the image histogram. The peak of the histogram that corresponds to the is almost invisible because they represent a small uh, 
percentage of the total surface of the total area of the image well there is a huge peak here which is the background and I, in fact if i move the slider here I can, you can see that as soon as I, I go above this peak everything is included in my threshold so now i go back to the, roughly the original value okay and then i apply in this case there are a few isolated pixels here that have remained and then the tetra minus which are quite good but there are a few holes mm -hmm. so I, I go to the binar binary filters process binary fill holes and i fill the holes inside the tetra -imine. and then i will need to take care of these isolated pixels at some point okay um I am ready now to uh, analyze these objects. Unfortunately, it is not man that many tetraminas in this image, but I will do with what I have, okay? Um, so in, in a normal uh, experiment, I may analyze more than one image, of course. So I, I, this is the analyze menu that is important for me. Before I, I start analyzing these blobs, these particles, I go to set measurements, so analyze set measurements to check what kind of measurements I'm taking of these objects. And currently I'm taking the area, the perimeter, the center of mass and the shape descriptors. And I think in this case this is all what I need. Actually I mainly need just the area. The center of mass can be used in some other applications. For instance, the center of mass gives me the position of these objects. So if I were to take the center of mass on different frames of a video, for instance, I can do some video tracking. The principle is similar. But to, uh, let's stick to, the, to what I have now. Okay, and now I can really analyze, and I go to analyze, analyze particles. And uh, in this case, there are some uh, criteria that I need to set to decide what particles I include and what I do not include. So I, I know that tetra -imen is maybe f uh, 40 micrometers of length. If I want to include them, I could set a limit on the area. So uh, say if, if I say the size in micrometers, it could be above uh, maybe, uh, let's say at least 300 micrometers square. In, in micrometers, of course, I could use pixel units instead, and then I would need to enter a different number. I need to be, be careful about what I set here, but I will check later if, if the number is too big, then uh, nothing is selected. If it is too small, then I may end up selecting also these small isolated pixels. And then I can also set the limit on circularity, but in this case, I think I don't really want to because the trimenas are quite circular. The pixels are also a bit circular, so I just keep this for, and take any value of circularity for the moment and show the outlines. Display the results. So this includes all this is uh, not really relevant. Now. Okay, so let's compare the, 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 the components that I have obtained with the image. It looks like I have all the tetra -imenos and and nothing else that's good so i can go ahead this is my first result it is seven objects which looks good i just go to file save as and save this table here so it is on my desktop that i'm in a performance and this is results for 15 degrees adaptation okay and we are ready with the first image now uh, I, I can close everything and i go uh, forward with the second i go quickly now uh, okay so there was already calibration in the in the image uh, and now because i recalibrated with the with the um, uh, line selection tool uh, it, it's probably very similar but slightly different because my my selection may, may have been slightly different from the real one um, so I, I will just keep the calibration that I had before 
Okay, but in any anyway, it should be similar. And and to check this, I just go immediately to analyze set scale and check that one. Okay, so one pixel is one micrometer. Uh, one pixel point one is one micrometer, which corresponds to the scale that I had before. Okay, so again, uh, image type eight bit, image adjust threshold. Good. Here, I'm I'm going ahead and segmenting this. Apply. Okay, there, there is a little bit of noise, some cells that are cut on the edge of the image. And uh, there is one other thing, and I zoom in with a plus. There are, uh, sometimes there are two cells that are close to each other, that touch each other, and if I, if I were to analyze them in terms of uh, connected components, this could be a problem, because it would look like if there is a cell that is essentially the size of two cells together, because they, to, they touch in the image, and so it looks like a, a, if there was a bigger cell. I could run the analysis and maybe later focus on, on uh, estimation of sizes that are based, say, on the median, which is less affected by these uh, strange cases here. But there is another thing that I can do, which is to use the watershed operation, which allows exactly in this kind of uh, situation to split objects that uh, are artificially connected. And here is another problem, which is some cell that has holes in between. So uh, I need to use two binary operations. First of all, I go to process binary fill holes, and I fill the holes in this cell here. And, uh, and then I go to process binary and then watershed which splits these cells that were uh, attached and probably we may have split also, also these. So now we have my, my cells which are segmented from the background. I need to label them and I go again to uh, analyze, analyze particles. I use the same parameters as, be, as before. The only thing that I wanted to include, to, to do is that I want to exclude cells that touch the edges because these are cut so the measure for area for these cells would not be realistic and i try and go with the same parameters for now uh, what do i get now so I, I get the cells i seem to have everything that i need, that I need. I, again i compare visually the images I, sometimes it happens that i may lose one cell but uh, okay, the, this is not a major problem because I have many statistically. If the problem is when I start including components that are clearly not cells or when I introduce a bias in the number. So I have my analysis and I have all the numbers and save the numbers. So results 20 degrees. Save. Close and close. And now I analyze the third image, the image of cells adapted at 25 degrees. So this image is a little bit more difficult because there are many cells, some overlapping, and some that are a little bit blurred. Let's see how it goes. So I, I check that the scale is the same, so the scale is the same as the previous images. And then uh, I go to, to image type 8 bit image adjust threshold the threshold as you see in this case the cells are uh, all confused here and i may be tempted to move the slider left or right to separate them right currently i have uh, the threshold at 73 if i move to the left or to the right i can change I can change my selection and, and this is something that if you when you do data analysis you realize quite soon that depending on how you analyze the data you can change the result in, part in this particular task we want to measure the size of these cells but if i set the, set the threshold here you can see that they will have smaller blobs selected smaller regions selected 
then if then if I select this the threshold somewhere here at a larger value. So depending how we do the analysis, we can change the result. So this uh, this is my first step. What now? One thing that they want to do is uh, there is a hole in the cell here, and there are some cells that touch each other. The first thing that I can do is uh, maybe apply this watershed so that I separate these uh, cells. Process binary watershed. In this case, it worked, but there are a few cells that were broken by the analysis. So one thing that I could do is maybe just uh, use the, the pencil to remove those broken cells or on the opposite to, to, to join them back again. If I, if I lose one cell, as you can imagine, it is not a, a major issue in terms of the result because uh, I, I lose it randomly. It could be or not in the image. What is important is that, is that I don't include uh, systematically objects that are smaller or larger. These, these also are, are not clearly cells or um, they don't represent the good size, so I, so I could I could remove them, and this also split, so I, I could remove some of these objects by hand. And uh, in any case, uh, as long as I, I'm not biased in what I do, this would be fine. Now, uh, let's try to analyze this. So analyze, analyze particles, same criteria as before, and what I get is, is mostly good, but there are a few objects that are smaller. In order to minimize the effect of this uh, variability, I think I should focus on measures such as the median that are less affected by extreme values. If I focus on the median, even if there are a, a few smaller cells and maybe a few bigger cells here, uh, the median will not be that much affected. So I save this uh, table of results, file, save as, and we have the result 25 degrees. I had already one here, but let's take this one, which seems good. Okay, and we have done this with this image analysis part. There is only one more thing that I want to, to, to sure. show you using the plugin MorphoLibJ. So I open the, this image again on 20 degrees. And I run the first steps again, but before doing this, I duplicate the image. So I go to image, duplicate, I have two copies now. And I run the analysis on this copy. So uh, image type 8 bit, image adjust threshold, apply. I f fill the holes first and then uh, watershed in this case. Process uh, binary fill holes, process binary uh, watershed. Now, uh, this time I run the analysis using the plugin MorphoLibJ. So, pl plugin MorphoLibJ, this is a binary image, and I want to connect with component labeling. I use a connectivity of 4, and I take the result of 8 bits. Um, in this case, 8 bits is sufficient because I have, a, I don't know, a few cells and a few pixels of noise. As long as the number of components is lower than 255, uh, then, uh, then it's okay to have 8 bits. And in this case, I think this is what I, I need. So I have these labels done. And I, I can um, I go to, uh, uh, still to the plugin, MorphoLibJ on the labeled image that I have, and I focus on the label boundaries. I have the boundaries of my image, but this, uh, this is not good because I still have all the noise. So I go back one step, um, plugins, MorphoLibJ. So this is a labeled image. I want to filter the size, label size filtering, and uh, only take those that are a little bit big. So let's say 700 pixels or something like this. Um, this seems quite good because I have uh, still the cells and I don't, I didn't lose probably uh, anything but noise. 
So I'm happy with this image now. And if I want to check the result on top of the original image, what I can do is that I go to the menu for the plugin again, plugin, Morpholib-J, I have this uh, label image, and I, I take the label boundaries. So this makes me a boundaries image. And uh, I, ca I can put this in color, for instance, again through the plugin, plugin, Morpholib-J, um, so label image, labeled to RGB, and set some color. Jet on background, I leave a black background, and I have this image. So you see now I have the outline of this each cell, and I may want to uh, to superpose, superpose this outline on the original image. So I go to another menu, which is a process menu, image calculator, which allows to make calculations on the images. As you know, each pixel is actually a one number associated to each pixel. So we can do calculations and operations on these numbers. Take the subtract, multiply, divide the numbers from one image to another image. In this case, I take the maximum value, which is okay. And I take as a, one of the two images, this to time in a 20 degrees, which is the original one. And as the other image, I can take the one that I just created now which I think is this one, and let's see the result. So now I have created an image where we see the outline, so I can easily check if my uh, segmentation and identification of, of objects was good, and I can also maybe make take a picture uh, for, uh, I don't know, for a, for a publication or for something. So uh, I, I can save this final result. Yes, I can choose different formats, TIFF or PNG or I don't know in this case I'm taking, okay, I, take, I took TIFF and I saved it. Oh, I don't know what the na what name I used, but yeah, it's okay, it's a different name, perfect. So I, I, now I also have an, an image that I could associate to my report or, or publication. Maybe I can crop this. I can I can do something else, but I keep a track of the of the image. I, I, the result are these three CSV files, mm -hmm. which are here. I can open them with a text editor, for instance, to see what is inside. And we see it's a CSV file with a series of uh, header columns and then a series of numbers. In this case, I open them with Excel as well, because I need to uh, change a few things before I, before I can plot them. So I, I start from one of them, the results at 15 degrees. I save with a different name. So results all total, let's call it. Um, I can, I can, yeah, okay, I can save as CSV. Anyway, I, I add them now. What I want to do, I want to combine these files so that I can have together the data for 15, 20, and 25 degrees. I need to uh, insert a new column where I, I write what I, this, uh, these numbers actually represent. In this case, is uh, 15 degrees, okay? So I, I copy 15 and paste everywhere. Now I call this uh, adaptation temperature or, or something like this. So, uh, this has no uh, header, so I add one something ID. Uh, this area, this is, uh, you know, it, we, you need to remember what we said in the previous sessions. Don't leave empty cells. Don't use uh, dots or other symbols other than the underscore. So I, I replace perim with perimeter. And I replace circ with circularity. 
the other uh, columns are more or less okay these are the x and y coordinates of the centroid the, the aspect ratio we we don't care too much because today i want to focus on area mainly i would say so i have done it for 15 degrees and i take the data for 20 and merge with the, that's for 15 and I, I include in the template, sorry. No. And the same for the, the data for 25 degrees. Here we are. I select all the, all the rectangle with the data. They are already nicely in the rectangle. The only, the only issue was really that uh, uh, in the header that we had these dots and the, the missing value. But apart from that, uh, the data are already formatted as we, we want them to be. So for 25, and apply 25 to everything in this image. So I'm ready. I, I need to save this as CSV again. File, save as, and I make sure that I use MS DOS uh, CSV because it's slightly different from the CSV for uh, Macintosh CSV, which has a different uh, return of line symbol. Okay, replace, and I'm ready with this. Now I move to another piece of software, which is RStudio, which we used in the previous sessions as well. And I need to open a, a script that I can modify so that I plot this data. Okay, I already have a script that is more or less good for this that we used in the, in the past because it makes a, a box plot, so it's, it's good for us. I copy this text and I create a new script. R script, paste the text. And this was done for analyzing another file and uh, I, I go quickly so. I clear the memory with the RM list equal ls. Then they, the, the script will ask the user to select a file uh, and uh, record the file name in a new variable. And then move uh, the path of the current working directory to the same direction as the file name, which is not uh, essential in this case, but it is convenient because then it keeps in memory uh, that path and when you open the same file again you then have to go through all the paths in the computer and uh, and move to this directory then reads the content of the file so far so far it only knew the file name and from here on it also knows the content of the file which is read into a table in the data frame uh, named d with names D, we can read the headers of the data frame. Let's run up to this point so that we can have a look. So, run. Uh, I wasn't working on the desktop, and I was working for the trimena. Uh, results total. So D uh, seems good for me for the moment. We have everything we wanted. And now we want to plot. We use the package ggplot here. Yeah. Um, before before I go on, I, s I want to save this file as well. So save um, plot uh, in result. Let's say something like this: plotting results. Now, this plot was uh, plotting something as a f function of the name and uh, the value that was plotted was the height. Now we want to plot the area instead, mm -hmm. which would be in micrometers, because this is what we select, as a function of adaptation temperature. Temp. 
and uh, here. So, so this is how you color the, the box, and here is the function of, that uh, classifies the boxes. Uh, the width, the, the size of the fonts, this uh, so temperature is the, is the variable. And then we set the scales. The, the y scale is continuous and it is the area in mic micrometers squared, while this is a discrete scale and the name is um, uh, temperature, adaptation temperature. And the title is uh, size of adapted at different temperatures. And let's try to make this plot. Okay, so it, it is quite nice. We see we see at least uh, from from this image we see that uh, the area decreases with temperature. Of course, there are many problems. There are not that many data points in this uh, in this box here, and uh, here there could be some segmentation problem for for the twenty five degrees. And here here is the final result after I've. Uh, uh, corrected a few things, added the symbol for micrometers, uh, I added the, the points on top of the box. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, spreading of, of these points. And then maybe we can run some statistical tests, like the, the kruskal wallis test, or something to, to test our results, to get an idea about what we have. So uh, we have uh, we have completed a comp an image analysis from from the beginning from the images to the final result where you can uh, have numbers from the image. So this is essentially a small project that uh, is very similar to what you could do in a normal situation. It's the only difference is that you probably would have more data, more checks about the quality of those data, and, and so on. But we have really done everything from the beginning, from the images, up to the final result, which is the plot. The next part would be uh, to write about those results and about your methods, which is something that we are going to cover in a future session.